I've done a couple of these latency guides now, including the first one on Rainbow Six Siege that goes into a lot more detail on the wider factors that you might want to consider. I'll link them in the cards above if you want to check them out. For Valorant though, this is one of the tightest spreads for latency that I've seen. In CS2, the worst results that I saw were over three times slower than the fastest. In Valorant, we're looking at, optimistically, like a 40% difference. The main reason for that is that there aren't all that many settings available to tweak. You've got a couple of high, medium, low settings, a couple of on-off options, and the only advanced feature I could find was NVIDIA Reflex. So, in short then, really no matter what settings you pick, you're probably having as close to the best experience as you can have. Still, for those that want the utmost in performance, let's take a look at these test results and find out what works best. Starting off with the base high, medium and low options, where everything else remains default, there is very, very little spread between these. High and medium are functionally identical, like down to the 0.1 millisecond range, with medium only being fractionally faster in the minimums. Really no big difference there. Low is one millisecond faster, with a noticeable drop in the minimums too, although this isn't anywhere near as a precipitous drop as I've seen in Siege or CS2. It becomes pretty obvious why that's the case when you look at the FPS data. High and medium are running at 530 and 537 FPS respectively, aka basically the same. There's really no big advantage here, both from outright performance and for latency. There are a few more options to play with, starting with turning NVIDIA Reflex off. By default, at least on my test system, it was on by default, and turning it off technically did speed up the average, but it also increased the minimum and maximum values, making for a clearly less smooth experience. There's also no major performance difference, save for the 1% lows that seem to have rebounded from the standard low result. So if turning reflex off doesn't help, what about setting it to on plus boost? Well, that does improve things, dropping the average to 11.5 milliseconds and bringing the min and max results to the lowest we've seen so far. Interestingly, the FPS actually went back down slightly. We're still talking like single digit percentage performance differences though, so certainly not, uh, you know, what I would call noticeable or substantive. Okay, so what about disabling anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering, two more sort of post-processing style effects? Surprisingly, that makes a big difference, dropping the average latency a further millisecond along with the min and max, well that's another millisecond each. That's a pretty significant drop, although looking at the FPS, you might see why. Dropping anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering lifts the frame rate from around 550 to just over 600 FPS average. That's a bit more significant, although there is something else that's interesting here. If I swap back to the latency results, but I include the frame time, as in how long on average a frame took to render, you can see that there is functionally no difference between the frame times. Even the worst result, high, is still only 1.89 milliseconds versus the best result we've seen so far, which is just 1.66 milliseconds. And yet, we've dropped like four milliseconds off of the total or at least average latency. This shows nicely how multiple factors affect the latency you will experience. It isn't just more frames, frames mean lower latency, although that is generally the case, but certain settings actively delay new frames being displayed. 
Things like anti-aliasing uh, are a post-processing type of effect, and so if you disable that, you basically get to skip a step in the render pipeline, and so those frames can get to the screen faster. Of course, this ends up being a trade-off between visual quality and performance. Anti-aliasing can make a massive difference to how the game looks, so personally, I'd likely leave that one on. But if the ultimate in, uh, you know, competitive advantage is what you're after, you can turn it off. Speaking of turning settings off, there are a couple more settings we can try disabling. With literally everything set to off, low, and reflex on, we get functionally the same result. It is 0.4 milliseconds faster on average, but I'd call that within margin of error. The maximum goes up by 0.3 milliseconds and the minimum goes down by 0.6, so it's kind of all over the place. Interestingly, the FPS performance does improve, going from 603 FPS to 631 FPS. Not bad, and quite surprising to see such little improvement in latency between those results. The last thing I want to check is if dropping the resolution will help. Now, I actually doubt it, as even at 1600p on this XMG Core 16, we're clearly CPU limited, but I mean, let's test it anyway. On the latency front, we actually get a slightly higher result, settling between low with no AA and low with everything. The FPS data shows a slightly slower result than at 1600p as well, indicating quite clearly that we're CPU limited here. As always, different configurations of CPU, GPU, RAM, and your display will all give you slightly different results here, although the trend should be the same across the board. The lower the settings, the higher the performance, and the lower the latency. Certain settings have effects outside the outright performance though, like disabling anti-aliasing here, so it is worth keeping that in mind too. So to sum up then, Valorant has a remarkably tight spread due to its limited selection of settings. Enabling NVIDIA Reflex to on plus boost seems to be a good shout, as does disabling anti-aliasing. Otherwise, it seems like you're pretty good regardless of what settings you opt for. Of course, like I said, depending on what system configuration you have, that might change what settings are more or less relevant and more or less effective, and so if you want to be able to test stuff like this yourself, you can pick up an open source latency testing tool that I make like at home downstairs at my desk uh, from osrtt.com slash osltt. Uh, like I said, I make them here in the UK, a bit of a rarity, I know, and hand-built as well. Uh, also, if you want to check out the uh, plenty of other videos I have, you can be notified of them with a subscription button, and you can check out the uh, rest of the videos on the end cards, including more of these latency guides, and especially the first one from Rainbow Six Siege that explains a lot more about what it is I'm testing, and a lot of the wider factors as well. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you all in the next video.